Welcome to Homestead Reptown. Today I'm going to show you how I started this new bioactive enclosure. I used an iHeart Gecko kit door. I used 100% silicone, great stuff foam, cork bark, um, cork flats, um, weed mat, plants, soil composites, nitrolite, and my critters. So all this together cost me around $82.99. Now I left out certain things like the plants and the critters because I already owned the plants and I already had the critters. So this was a fun process. Um, we have our lovely model right there. Isn't he a gorgeous gecko? But I used the cork tiles and these, it came in a pack of four and they're 12 by 12 by 12, fit in there perfectly, just silicone them on there. And then I got to the carving period. So I originally was gonna go for a mushroom log. I breaking this apart, carving it a little bit more, do, 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 speeding this up a little fast so no one gets too bored. But uh, this was in the making uh, for a couple of months. Um, and I just got all the materials that I needed together and I was also waiting for it to get warmer because I started this process during the winter. And uh, I prefer to do, to open my windows when I'm doing a lot of stuff with the great stuff foam and the silicone because it, it is a bad smell and it's very chemically and you really shouldn't be inhaling too much of that in an enclosed room. Or if you can do it outside, that's even better. But just combing this, it looks, see I was making a little mushroom, didn't turn out that way. Um, but I think what I did make, I think the geckos will enjoy it. So trying to add that little mushroom log to a spot where I like. Oop, knocked it over. Maybe here, maybe up there playing around with things and really play around with it and get a good idea where you want things. Um, take your time. So put your things down where you want your wood and move away and see if you want them because once the foam's in, the foam's in and you're not moving anything. It's locked in. So I'm going to start the carving process. So this had to cure for I think around 8 to 12 hours. Um, carved it up and see there's a little stuff coming out so it didn't cure long enough. But I have it carved up and that little mushroom doesn't look like a mushroom. It's like a, a cliff, I guess, for the geckos. Um, I made a little nook right there to put a food bowl. And you can see there's branches in there. So they can take advantage of going into the um, little hollow spaces. And just make it fun for the geckos. So right now I'm wiping down the rim of this enclosure with alcohol. So propylene alcohol. Make sure I get a very clean surface. Um, really, really cleaning that. You need to make sure it's super clean before you add the silicone. Okay. My little dog's in the way. That's my little elderly Yorkshire Terrier. That's Kiva. She's actually sitting on the couch right now while I record this. So, trashing that. Gonna grab the door. See how nice that door is? So... I didn't open the door up. It's still in its plastic until I siliconed it and I had it all set up and it was cured. And I noticed this door is faulty. So I have ordered many of these iHeart Gecko doors before. And this is the first one that had a default in it. Um, I'm a little disappointed with it, but that's going to happen with any company. Um, I generally love their products. I think it's a great way for people to make really nice bioactive enclosures. Um, make them more affordable instead of getting the exoterra stuff all the time. Um, so adding the silicone, the little Yorkie's in the way again, shoo her out of the way. She doesn't need to be sticking on her nose and things. Um, she likes to eat random junk. Tissues. She's a, she's a strange dog. But here we go, put the silicone down. Silicone all the way around. Then I'm placing the door down. Press it down. I moved it off to the side after I pop my glove on and make sure I have a good seal around. Wipe it down. Um, then I let this sit for 48 hours. It's fully cured. And now I'm out here and I'm taking this little card I have here and I'm just scraping off the excess. So just cleaning it up to make it look nice for me. You don't technically have to do that, but um, why not? I, I want it to be to look nice. So just doing that it takes a little time, but once you get that all done, it's all ready to go. And I think this took me 
mm, like a couple of days to finish like I think four days it took me about four days to finish this up um you can go a little bit quicker but I was just you know leaving it off to the side fixing it up leaving it off to the side and just playing around where where I wanted things where I wanted plants so now I'm going to add the drainage layer so I'm doing something a little bit different. I've been playing around with different drainage layers. So I'm adding this foam layer. So this is non-toxic foam. Um, and I just wanted a, a lighter layer base uh, than what I normally do with uh, either Leica or uh, pea gravel. Or sometimes I've used, what is that other stuff? Uh, lava rocks. I like lava rocks the most. All right, so this is our soil mixture. So in the white container right there is horticultural charcoal. And we have this little compressed soil brick. I have my own soil I mix. And then in that red bucket is 100% pure organic. Uh, what is that mulch called again? Um, cypress mulch. So I love cypress mulch. It doesn't mold very quickly. It just adds that extra humid layer. And I mix it in. Toss it up like a salad. Add some more water. Break it up. And toss it up. Toss it like a salad. After I get all that done, I add in my soil mixture. So my soil mixture, I'm a gardener. So I get a lot of my own gardening stuff and gardening supplies. And I know how to mix certain things. But I also breed feeder insects, and I use a, um, a dirt-based soil, and I just use, for my fertilizer, for my bioactive enclosures, I use insect frass. So insect frass is just insect feces, um, but that's worm castings. That's also what a lot of people like to use, but it just adds that little bump in the nutrients to your new bioactive enclosure. Alright, going to toss this in. So I'm tossing it more towards the back because I'm going to make a little bit of a slope. So I wanted to slope upwards and be a little bit more shallower towards the bottom. So I'm going to fill this up all the way because I want a deep layer base to get my plants in. There we go. And now picking the plants I'm going to use. So I'm using this lovely plant right here. So a lot of these are cuttings I've gotten out of my household plants. Swiss cheese plant, apothos, um, a philodendron, um, a vining philodendron, and a, a larger variety of philodendron. I can't think of it right off the top of my head. Um, trying a tropical cactus. So this is a tropical cactus that is an epiphyte. So I've moved it up. I'm also moving this other epiphyte up to grow towards the top. And that is the, uh, where are you again? Bromeliad. That's my bromeliad. All right. So now we're going to add our cleanup crew, and those are springtails. Going to dump a few in there. Start off. So once you buy a springtail colony, I really encourage you, if you're going to do multiple enclosures, to put some off to the side and have like one or two extra colonies on hand. And these are my isopods. A lot of a couple of different varieties in there. Toss those guys in, and look, they're ready to go. They're 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 rolling. They're going to do my cleanup job for me. Um, I'll add some other cleanup crew here or there. I like to add a diversity in cleaning crew. Probably add some roaches. Might add a superworm beetle. Alright. And then their plant selection. So you can really go crazy at your local shops and get whatever plants you want. Most tropical plants are fine, but always check to make sure your tropical plants are non-toxic to your geckos. Now... Crested geckos don't eat plants, um, but there are other reptiles that do eat plants. So really be careful with that. And this is the end result of this bioactive enclosure. I'm pretty happy with it. And the only thing I said is this, this door is faulty right here. You can see how I'm wiggling and moving it. It wasn't, something's wrong with it. It wasn't screwed in properly. That's the only thing I'm really upset about. I heard gecko normally has fantastic products. But this is a defaulty one. And I can't really, I'm not pulling it off here to send it back to iHeartGecko. It's too late. So I'm just going to end up having to keep this faulty door. Maybe I can fix it. Um, but I'll have to see what I can do about that. But like I said, iHeartGecko's products are generally fantastic. 
and the door is just faulty and here it is now um i'm gonna get it off the floor move some stuff around make it look nice but this is a skyscraper type enclosure so it is a 20 long which that is a 12 by 12 by 36 inches so it's 36 inches tall it's a cute little enclosure and a lucky little gecko is going to live in this nice little enclosure we're moving in some geckos in here and i really like it i think once it grows out it's going to be a fantastic enclosure i also added some vines in here some lovely grapes